welcome to today's On This Day in Tudor History. I'm Claire Ridgeway. I've written several books on Tudor history, um, including the book that has inspired these videos, which is called On This Day in Tudor History, and takes you through the year with um, things that happened on this day and articles going into more details. Ha, I've got some very snoring dogs already this morning, so uh, let's see if I can keep them uh, asleep with my, my voice uh, lulling them this morning. On this day in Tudor history, the 11th of June, of course, 1509, so we're right at the start of King Henry VIII's reign. In fact, just over seven weeks after he'd become King of England. The 17-year-old King Henry VIII married 23-year-old Catherine of Aragon. Um, she was, of course, known in Spain as Catalina de Aragon, and she was daughter of Isabel, or Isabella as uh, the English call her, Isabel I of Castile, and Ferdinand, or Fernando as we call him here in Spain, the second of Aragon. Uh, she married, um, Catherine married the king in a private ceremony in the Queen's Closet at Greenwich Palace. Now, the last time I mentioned uh, the Queen's Closet, um, I had some comments asking me, what exactly is that? Surely they can't have been getting married in a cupboard. Well, no, a queen, the Queen's Closet was the Queen's Chapel, a private chapel within a bigger chapel. Uh, it was used for uh, sort of feast days and holy days and um, for the Queen for private prayer. In fact, if you go to Hampton Court Palace today into the Chapel Royal there, you can see the, uh, the Queen's closet there. So it's just a private chapel. Now this wedding ceremony was very private and low key. Um, as the king was in the middle of planning a very lavish, sumptuous, huge joint coronation for him and Catherine. Now, this coronation was due to take place on the 24th of June, which was the feast of St. John and also Midsummer's Day, and it would take place at Westminster Abbey. So that's what the focus was on, their joint coronation rather than their wedding. So this was very private, very low key, and it had just two witnesses present at the ceremony. George Talbot, who was Earl of Shrewsbury, and who was also Henry VIII's Lord Steward. And then William Thomas, who was a groom of the Privy Chamber. So just those two and Henry and Catherine. Now, Catherine was, of course, the first of six wives for Henry VIII, and Henry was her second husband. She'd previously been married to Arthur, Prince of Wales, who'd been um, Henry's brother, but he'd died six months into their marriage. He died in April 1502. Now, on the 23rd of June 1503, so about just over a year after Arthur's death, a marriage treaty for Catherine to marry the new sort of Prince of Wales, Prince Henry, was signed, and uh, the couple became betrothed at a ceremony on the 25th of June that year. It was planned that a proper marriage cer ceremony would take place when Henry VIII turned 15 on the 28th of June 1506, and that that would give England and Spain a chance to get a dispensation from the Pope to allow the couple to marry, because Catherine had been married to Henry's brother, so that could be seen as an incestuous union. In the summer of 1504, the Pope showed that he was willing to grant the dispensation required but shortly after um, Isabel received this dispensation, Isabel being Catherine's mother, uh, Isabel uh, died, and that was in November 1504. Is Isabel's death had a major impact on Catherine. So not only did it leave Catherine grief-stricken, and I suspect very homesick as well, but it made her a less attractive prospect as a bride for King Henry VIII's, um, sorry, King Henry VII's uh, son and heir, Prince Henry, because Catherine's father, Ferdinand, uh, did not inherit Castile. He was not the heir to Castile on Isabel's death. 
So it didn't, Catherine wasn't as important now. She wasn't the daughter of the great Catholic monarchs anymore. One of them had died. Henry VII therefore discouraged his son from the union now. And on the 27th of June, 1505, the day before the marriage was meant to be solemnised, uh, Prince Henry repudiated the betrothal, uh, saying that he was not going to go ahead uh, with the marriage anymore. Poor Catherine was left in an impossible position. Her father didn't want her to return to Spain, but as she was no longer good marriage material, Henry VII had cut off her allowance. She had no choice but to remain in England, but the fact that she didn't have an allowance anymore meant that she was kind of living in virtual poverty. She just had to hope that things would turn out right in the end. And things did get better when her father appointed her as a Spanish ambassador in England. But she had to wait until her knight in shining armour came to her rescue in 1509 for things to be right again. And of course, this knight in shining armour was Henry VIII. But when he became king, he decided that he wanted Catherine as his wife. Um, of course, he was a knight in shining armour for quite a good few years. They had a happy marriage for a long time, but then he went on to have his marriage to Catherine annulled in 1533 after a six-year quest for that annulment. Catherine died in January 1536, just a few months before the execution of her successor, Queen Anne Boleyn. So that's what happened on this day in history in 1509. We had the very private and low-key marriage ceremony of King Henry VIII and his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. You can subscribe to this channel by clicking around about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as new videos go live, but I will see you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.